good morning. It is about 6 a.m. Way earlier than I'm usually awake. Look at this, we got a bunch of uh, peaches, I guess, or nectarines or something. There is a market over here. I'm going to walk through here. A uh, flower shop. And so uh, this video is a twofer. It is a uh, introduction to the new country that I'm in, my 73rd country, but I am not going to say where I am. And feel free to guess, but a request, please do not guess where this is if you have been to the city. So if you know for certain where it is, or just if you've been to this city, maybe you're from here or whatever, then don't guess because that's too easy. But uh, perhaps if you're from a neighboring country and just kind of recognize it, then that's fine. Or if you just want to make a uh, educated guess based on seeing the language, or hello, other things, then go ahead and try to figure out where I am and so the uh, two fur part is that this is also going to be a very informative video about where you can travel <laughs> as an American. Now I'll just uh, point out that I'm definitely getting some looks for filming so uh, there might be a bit of suspiciousness about people filming here and uh, I can guess why but I'm not gonna say because that would be a clue all right time to uh, take off this mask and get to uh, discussing the subject at hand which is where can you travel as an American citizen right now because the list is very very short unfortunately Europe recently opened its borders to non-Europeans on July 1st. Today is, appropriately enough, July 4th, America's Independence Day. But uh, our freedom is not as great as it could be, as it used to be, before the global crisis situation because of the escalating cases of the uh, virus in the United States. And so Europe opened its borders to a uh, select number of countries from outside of Europe and Canada made the list, but United States did not. And for people who have uh, asked me in questions, in comments, are you traveling on a Canadian passport? Because I was born in Vancouver, Canada and am a uh, Canadian citizen. I had a Canadian passport years ago, but it expired and I never renewed it. And so I am traveling on a US passport and thus am subject to the restrictions of being a US citizen. Now, I just spent two weeks in Mexico, posted a couple of videos from there, and I want to uh, talk about the whole experience of traveling in Mexico, what it was like in the midst of the uh, pandemic, and uh, flying there and all that. Then I will uh, discuss the countries that Americans can travel to. Now, I just wanted to say that uh, one of the reasons that I'm not mentioning the country that I'm in right now is because my next video will show the journey uh, getting here, including the flights and everything. And so it's kind of a uh, mystery video. Of where am I going to go? And so that's why I don't want to uh, say outright where I am right now. So wait for the next video and you will be confirmed as to where I am and also see the experience of flying as it is now in the course of the uh, global crisis situation of the pandemic. And so uh, a uh, important question that uh, people will be asking and wondering about is, and you know, criticizing me for as well, is why are you traveling now with everything that is going on? And what I would say to that is, first of all, it is a personal choice situation. 
It just depends on uh, what you are comfortable with, what risks you are willing to take, and whether you are willing to face the added challenges that now come to traveling when things are so unpredictable with uh, flights more likely to be canceled or delayed or whatever dealing with wearing uh, face masks on the planes most countries are not going to allow you to travel there whether you're American or, or any other country and the incredible uncertainty of if the virus gets worse all of a sudden and then the world goes back into full lockdown mode then people could be stuck stranded once again like happened last March when all of a sudden everything was just locking down and people got stuck all around the world and there had to be repatriation flights and everything in order to get people back home to their home countries and so that is a uh, reality that um, we have to uh, face if we're going to leave our home and especially if we're going to uh, go to another country and as far as the uh, you know health risks and spreading the virus and stuff then basically I am following the guidelines the rules that are being enforced and advised by governments and so uh, in my last videos in Mexico then the reason that I went to Mexico is because Mexico is actively opening up to tourists in select areas and so the area of Cancun and Playa del Carmen on the Yucatan Peninsula is considered a low-risk area and so they decided to open up to uh, tourists there not all of the country Americans can travel to Mexico that is one of the countries on the list but in most of Mexico then if you get there even though they will let you in then you will find that there is not much to do I mean I can't say for sure what exactly is uh, you know the case because I just went to Cancun and around there but uh, most likely then hotels will be closed if you go to some of the other uh, beach resort areas then it won't be typical tourist vacation experience but apparently Cabo San Lucas as well on the Baja of uh, Mexico is also supposed to open up to tourists and so those are two areas that you can look at you want to check you know the latest uh, news and make sure that you're actually going to be welcome there but basically then I am following the uh, guidelines of wearing masks where it's required and lots of uh, hand sanitizer and washing hands and social distancing and all that depending on what the expectations are in the place that I am at then I am following the rules and so traveling now is not for everybody but uh, for those who are tired of sitting around their house and are looking for an adventure then there are places that you can go where countries are actively opening up and, and encouraging tourism to come back in part because of the economic impact of tourism shutting down and how it is uh, affecting not just the economy of the country but individual people and their livelihoods because I read a statistic recently that 10% of the planet of the people on the planet support themselves from tourism 10% that is a huge amount of people who are being especially hit hard I mean all industries pretty much have been uh, impacted to some extent but uh, people who have hotels and restaurants and everything are seeing their business drop you know 90% or whatever as a result of this whole situation and so there's actually a uh, upside of tourism and traveling to places is you're bringing your dollars there and obviously governments have made a calculated decision of the virus and the risks versus the economic impacts and 
people who are, you know, suffering and have said, okay, we're going to allow people to travel um, once again. And so this country where I am is one of the uh, few places that Americans can travel to right now. And that was their choice, the government's choice to say, you can come here. And so here I am. Now I'm going to uh, tell the whole uh, process of traveling from the United States to Mexico and then talk about what it was like being in Mexico and how it was different now and then uh, get to all of the countries that I'm aware of that you can travel to as an American. So I flew from Portland, Oregon about uh, two and a half weeks ago to Cancun with a layover in Guadalajara and so I went through customs in Guadalajara and there were no questions asked. As an American, then you can travel to Mexico without a visa for 180 days, so six months. Just show your passport and that's it. You're in the country. There might have been a health questionnaire little form, I forget. But uh, if there was, then it was just a really simple little thing um, and uh, no big deal at all. Okay. Uh, this is kind of sketchy. Let's uh, try to cross the street the regular way. And so Mexico is basically fully open if you uh, choose to go there. But, you know, it's a matter of where you can actually uh, do anything if you're trying to travel around or whatever. And so I arrived in uh, Cancun with Anna, who was in my uh, other videos. Doing good? Yeah, Having fun? Yes. Me too. Can't complain. And we spent two weeks there having an amazing time in Playa del Carmen and did a uh, cenote tour of the uh, underground uh, lakes on the Yucatan and did a snorkeling tour to Cozumel Island, which is just off the coast of Playa del Carmen. And so I only recorded two videos of those two tours and we stayed there for two weeks and so the rest of the time we were just kind of on a uh, actual vacation and I wasn't filming and editing and everything. And so uh, we just kind of, you know, hung out in Playa del Carmen and, and enjoyed uh, exploring around there. And as I mentioned in one of those videos, then the beaches were not open at Playa del Carmen. Our hotel had told us that you couldn't swim, but you could walk on the beach. But we were walking on the beach the uh, first day that we were there. And we got stopped by a policeman on a uh, ATV going down the beach. And he kicked us off the beach. It wasn't allowed to even walk on the sand of the beach right in front of our hotel. But uh, we were able to like sit right in front of the hotel, just like right there without kind of going out where there were some palm trees and just kick back and uh, relax and listen to music and drink a beer and stuff like that. And then there was a pool. And uh, so we just kind of made the most of it and enjoyed our time there. And then from there we went to uh, Cancun and the beaches were open in Cancun. Stayed there about uh, five days and we had a really great time. Hotel right on the beach with a pool and you could just walk right out there and go swimming. No policeman bothering you or anything. But uh, things were not normal in general as far as uh, what was open. Lots of businesses were closed. And going to restaurants, then there was a... I love the contrast between the old Switzerland and the city of Basel, Greeks. Oh. Well, you got a really good clue there if you saw that uh, sign. So the uh, old style trolleys and uh, streetcars, whatever, and then the uh, more modern one. And so the restaurants in Playa del Carmen and Cancun were in fact open. And you could uh, go there and sit down and, and eat uh, like normal. But when you walk up to the restaurant, then there would be like a, uh, a foot washing station with like water in it and then a uh, mat for, you know, scraping off your feet. And then 
hand sanitizer, all of the uh, restaurants and stores and stuff, there would be a person standing there and they would squirt hand sanitizer in your hands. And then many places would do a temperature check before you enter the uh, store or the restaurant. So if you uh, choose to travel to Mexico or elsewhere, then expect there to be those kinds of restrictions of you know, wearing your mask on the plane and in stores and, you know, various other places and the, uh, you know, suggestions of social distancing and all that kind of stuff. Here in this country, things are quite uh, normal, as you've seen. Some people wearing masks, but uh, not very many. And uh, restaurants and bars and stuff are open. I haven't really seen a whole lot so far, but I will be exploring and showing much more of this city and this country in the uh, coming days and weeks. Naranza. That is orange juice. And notice how similar it is to the same word in Spanish, which is naranja. And so getting to the issue of where can you actually travel to as an American citizen, then first, of course, America. You can actually travel around uh, the United States with restrictions Hawaii has a 14-day required quarantine, Alaska as well, a 14-day required quarantine, and of course it will not be the same if you try to, you know, do a, a van road trip as many uh, travel vloggers are now doing, or do any kind of a traveling around. It will depend on the state, of course, and various other uh, factors, but uh, national parks could be closed, campgrounds could be closed, etc but uh, you can actually do some traveling there. And then, of course, Mexico, with uh, very limited parts of the country that you can actually uh, go to and experience as a traveler. Thirdly, the United Kingdom is open to Americans. However, there is also a mandatory 14-day quarantine required there. They uh, just recently changed their rules and are no longer requiring a quarantine for uh, citizens of many other countries. And so they are actually taking another step of opening up further. However, Americans are not included in the uh, list of countries that do not have to quarantine. And so as it is now, then you still have to quarantine in the United Kingdom if you try to travel there. But then once you do, I guess you can travel around. I'm really not sure exactly uh, how closed off things are in the UK, but that is one place you could consider traveling to. Also, Ireland, I believe, is open to Americans, but they also have a 14-day quarantine. So if you don't want to spend two weeks sitting around a hotel room, ordering takeout, and watching lots of Netflix, then you'll want to strike off Ireland and the United Kingdom. Mexico did not have any kind of a quarantine, no health checks or, or uh, tests for the virus or anything. It was just completely uh, open as far as entering the country. And so basically all of Western Europe is closed to Americans. The Schengen zone, it is called, is the area of 27 countries that have opened their borders to each other. France and Spain and the Netherlands and Portugal and Scandinavia, etc then once you enter one of those countries, then you are in the Schengen zone of Europe and you don't need to show your passport again as you go across the borders of the other countries. But the Schengen zone is closed to Americans because of the rising cases. July 1st, as I mentioned, they opened to non-Europeans, but Americans were not included. So you gotta just kind of strike off all of Western Europe, basically. But in Eastern Europe, then there are a few countries that are open. So Belarus, and they had a 14-day quarantine. I'm not sure now if uh, it is still expected or required, but uh, that is one place to consider and look into what the uh, latest rules are. Ukraine, which also I think has a required 14-day quarantine. All of the information here is is uh, subject to change and will be outdated weeks or months from now. But today, July 4th, then this is the latest information that I have. And then in the Balkans, there's Serbia, 
Kosovo, which is a disputed territory uh, claimed by Serbia. But anyways, uh, you can go to Serbia and Kosovo and North Macedonia. And I just heard that Albania opened its borders to all tourists. And then other than that, there's Egypt and there's Turkey. And then in the Caribbean, then there's a few islands, uh, Antigua and Barbuda. I think St. Lucia, maybe the US Virgin Islands are opening up uh, sometime soon. There might be a couple of other options in the uh, Caribbean there. And that basically covers it. And so it is a very short list of where you can actually go as an American. Many countries around the world are still fully closed to any tourism. Australia, it sounds like, is gonna be closed until like next year. New Zealand could be the same. And so the uh, options are limited for everybody right now, but for Americans especially, then it is looking pretty bad. But there are at least a few places that you can still travel to if you're ready for an adventure and want to uh, get out of the craziness happening in the United States right now. So stay tuned. In the next video, you will see me flying from Cancun, Mexico to this city here. See ya.